Foot placement is everything for a flamingo. I try and aim for this foot position where I can see just one of my bolts and my foot isn't that far past the front wheel. If you end up with your foot more straight, you're more likely to lift the back wheels and lose the board. If you can get to here and hold this position, you're gonna have full control through the turn. What I'm trying to make sure of with this foot position is that all of my weight is directly above this wheel. If I'm in front of the wheel, then as I start kicking it round, I'm gonna lift the back end and I don't want the back wheels to lift at all. If I'm too far back, I'm not gonna be able to unweight them and I won't be able to move the board round. I'll just end up torquing my knee out. By keeping my weight directly over that wheel, not only can I get a whip and just unweight the back end to get it round, but it means that when I finish that 180, I can then lean onto that wheel and steer around the rest of the turn. While this trick is obviously predominantly about balance, a massive chunk of it involves confidence. There is no way of doing this trick slowly because if you are stationary or rolling at a slow speed, you're not gonna have the momentum to carry all the way around. Now, what you've gotta do is, as you're rolling forward at quite a high pace, pre-wind by pulling your body back this way, and then whip into it, bring your arms around, and as you do that, take the back leg off. And at that point, you've gotta switch your weight just slightly to the front, just a little bit, in order to unweight the back. You don't want the back wheels to lift, but you're gonna to have to let them slide around a 180. Now, as an illustration, if I do this stood here, it's not going to work. Ugh! Because friction is gonna stop me dead. Unfortunately, you're gonna to have to go at this with some pace, and that can be a scary thing. When you start doing these, I can guarantee you're gonna do two things wrong a hell of a lot. First of all, is that after you've got that 180 whip, you're gonna keep turning. Your body is just gonna to wanna to keep going round and you're just gonna fly out of control. You've gotta hold yourself still once you've gone round enough. Basically get into the, the habit of being able to just lock after a certain amount of spin, so then you can hold it round for the arc. Now the second thing, is that you've got to perfect your weight distribution, front back. Because if you lean forward too far, you're going to start bringing up the back wheels. Once that happens, you're just going to start spinning and you're going to fly completely out of control. At the same time, if you don't swap your weight forward enough, then the back wheels aren't going to be able to get round, you're going to lock up and you're going to slam in a whole new fashion. Basically, you're going to spend at least a few days just falling over while spinning a hell of a lot. Push through that, try and figure out where you're going wrong, and just keep making minor adjustments in terms of your foot placement, your weight distribution, and how far you get through the spin before you lock up and just hold it. Once you've mastered that 180 power slide and you can roll away from it on one leg, you've obviously got to focus on the next part, which is that one-footed carve. Now, the actual mechanics of it aren't that difficult, Basically, you just switch your weight to the ball of your foot and your toes, let the trucks basically do the work and carve you around, and then you've just got to balance. So I stick your back leg out, put your arms out in front of you to help counterbalance, and lean forward slightly. Not too much or you're going to whip out the front of the board, end up on your face, you want to avoid that. But the difficult part is making the arc as good as it can be. You see some people who will exit a flamingo after like 90 degrees, or they'll whip round on themselves in a very small space. You want to try and hold it, sustain it, carve as far as you can. What helped me get that right is actually right here. It's this goddamn drain, which until this point really annoyed me because it's in the way in what is otherwise a beautiful place to skate. But having this here really helped because it gave me something to swing around. It gave me something to aim for. I would start by coming down this side kick into a flamingo about here, hold the arc and come out backwards to the other side. As I got better at the trick, I could start from further and further away and still hold it to come out around the other side of the drain. Finding something like that that you can aim for, don't go for a pole, because that can go horribly wrong, but just some sort of spot on the floor, 
That's really going to help you master this trick and do it as good as you possibly can. With a bit of practice, you should be able to do this with any decent freestyle setup. However, changing a variable here or there will make this trick harder or easier and that's going to vary depending on you and your own personal way of doing this trick. Now for me personally, I found that boards with big concave, steep kind of, like the early moonshine boards with big kind of U style concave, that made this trick a lot harder for me because my foot was only contacting the concave at the edges and it was losing grip and locking into the middle of the concave. So the concave was forcing my foot straight towards the nose, which is the worst position for this trick. Now you don't have to do what I did and go to a completely flat board, but something with less concave will probably help. The flip side is, because this trick is so dependent on friction, you are gonna need good grip tape and good soles on your shoes, because if either of those is worn down, there's a good chance you're gonna slide off it. The other thing that you've got to think about is your wheels, because obviously they've got to be able to slide across the surface. I'm currently using the new 95A Seismic wheels, and these will slide. If you're using kind of something in the low 90s, like a 91A wheel, you're probably not gonna be able to get it round. At the flip side, if you're using a 101A street wheel, you probably won't have enough friction and you'll probably be sliding out. So if you've got the opportunity experiment, try a couple of different wheels or just stay in the sweet spot of 97A, which is what most people are using anyway. You've also got to think about the surface you're doing it on. Polished concrete, you're gonna slide out. You're gonna to have to go into it a lot slower. Rough asphalt, you're gonna to have to go a lot faster to be able to break free from the surface. There's a lot of things to consider here, but it's worth persevering. Once you've got it, you can do it on anything, anywhere. So stick with it.